learning objectives include what are vaccines and what are various types of vaccines. Well, vaccine basically is a suspension of organisms or a part or fraction of an organism that induces immunity. That is the definition of vaccine. Now, there are this observation that people recovered from infections are immune to that infection. That basically led to these concept uh, of vaccines. What is the principle of the vaccine? The vaccine basically mimics or copies the infection by the organisms, but without causing the disease. So that is the principle, that we walk the body through the same processes that occur as a result of natural infection to an organism. But using a vaccine, we do not allow the organism to cause the disease, but it essentially stimulates the immune system in exactly in a natural way, like a natural way. Now, there are two types of vaccines. One is live vaccines, and the other is killed. Live vaccines, for a vaccine to be live, means that the, that the organism is able to replicate or multiply in the body. But the, the point is that if it is able to multiply in the body, it can cause infection. So there is a need that that pathogenicity element or that element that causes the damage or infection has to be deleted from the organism. And that process is called attenuation, or making the organism weak with, res with respect to uh, infection or its ability to cause the infection. Now, Louis Pasteur was basically the first who did that on Pasteurella multacida. Uh, this is a very interesting story, but you can read that story in, from the book. It's a, he tried to demonstrate infection by Pasteurella multacida in chicken to the royal family, but he did not succeed, and then he found out that it basically was a uh, strain of bacteria. So that observation that weakened strains of organism can use as a vaccine basically was discovered by Louis Pasteur. Now, there are benefits of uh, advantages or disadvantages of uh, live vaccines compared with uh, killed vaccines. Uh, let's talk about some benefits of live vaccines. Because organism is alive, you need to give only small amount or small number of the organisms because they can replicate in the body and can increase the antigen dose. And once the immune system is, is stimulated by the increased antigen dose for, over for a longer time, the quality of immune, immunity would be better. So um, it gives better antibodies. Live attenuated vaccines are better in terms of immune protection because they give heightened immune response, humoral as well as cellular. We know that the organisms... Those organisms that multiply inside the cell, they also induce cellular immunity, which is very important. Because for viral infections, to, to deal with the viral infections, we need to have uh, cellular immunity in place. And live vaccines can do that. So live vaccines make long-term immunity. Now, Inactivated or killed vaccines, uh, we, for some organisms, we don't have a choice that the organism that we use uh, or we can use for the vaccine, we cannot weaken the organism. There are some organisms like rabies virus, for example, um, although the people now have come up with a, a version, with a strain that is non-pathogenic, but problem with the, these non-pathogenic uh, strains is that sometimes they revert back to pathogenicity. So United States does not allow live vaccine, live rabies vaccine uh, in, in that country. Um, inactivated 
Vaccines are used when we have no choice uh, for the virus or microorganism bacteria uh, to attenuate or to weaken that. So we treat that organism with some chemical like phenol, like formalin, and we kill, basically kill the organism. And this process is called inactivation. Uh, disadvantages of killed vaccine is that antigen dose, whatever we give, it does not replicate like the live virus. So it has to be more given and then frequently given. So more boosters are needed with um, killed vaccines. This is a disadvantage. It costs more. And the quality of the immunity or the immune response is not very good. And also remember that it would induce humoral, preferentially humoral immune response, not much cellular immune response. Examples of inactivated killed va vaccines are rabies and polios and influenza. Very commonly seen influenza vaccine um, prepared. The virus is cultured in eggs and then inactivated by formalin um, makes a killed vaccine. And as I said, they induce humoral immunity, preferentially. There are situations where we do not use microbes as vaccines. We use their products, their secretions. Like if a microorganism secretes a toxin, that is causing a problem in the body. So we try to make antibodies against that toxin. An example is like tetanus toxin. Tetanus is caused by the secretion of the microorganisms, not by the microorganisms themselves. So we take that, that secretion, which is toxin, tetanus toxin, and modify that or treat with the chemicals. And the name we give that to that kind of vaccine is toxoid. But it does exactly the same thing as killed and activated uh, vaccines. They it would induce humoral immune response. Sometimes the molecule of the toxin is very small. And as you remember, that antigen, for, for any antigen to be antigen or for any protein or molecule to be antigenic, there has to be a certain molecular weight. If it is smaller than 10,000 uh, Dalton, it would not induce, it would be poor antigen. So what we do sometimes, we attach these poor antigens with uh, other proteins that we call carriers, and the process is called conjugation. So these are called conjugated vaccines, where the antigen by itself is a poor antigen because of its smaller molecular weight. Haemophilus influenzae type B is an example. DNA vaccines, you must have heard of, about DNA vaccines. DNA is injected into the cells. Uh, DNA that codes for a protein of the microbe against which we want to make antibodies. So we can, you know, the recombinant technology is available. We can uh, fish out that gene and put that into a vector, make copies of that DNA, and the whole DNA then uh, is cut and put into the cells, injected into the cells, and then this DNA would be transcribed into messenger RNA and protein would be formed, and those proteins are foreign to the body. But uh, this behaves like uh, the... the uh, organism is replicating inside the cells. So it's a, another modern trend, DNA vaccines. West Nile virus is an example. Well, polysaccharides uh, are not very good antigens because um, they cannot be put into, they can, they're not transcribed because polysaccharides are made, uh, they, are, they are put after some framework, and mostly this framework is proteins. And then these, lipopoly, these polysaccharide and lipopolysaccharides are afterwards put. And because polysaccharides of microbial origin are not um, present in the body, in the mammals, for example, so they have poor success. Only protein vaccines could be made uh, into DNA vaccines. There is a concept of uh, a subunit vaccines where the portion of the virus which is uh, mostly 
or most abundantly involved in making antibodies is taken and then used as a vaccine. So instead of the whole, uh, like killed vaccines, for example, there is a, a little modification these days that we use subunit vaccines. What it is basically is that you take the gene that codes, for example, the coat of the virus. There is no virus inside the coat, simply the capsomers or capsid, and they could be used as a subunit vaccine. Uh, recombinant technology can help in making such vaccines. Originally, the organisms, they were produced in bulk by culturing in big flasks or containers. Cell cultures are also used for viral uh, vaccines because virus needs a cell, live cell. Uh, it, it multiplies intracellularly. So it needs white. So culture, uh, cell culture could be used for viral vaccines. Similarly, chicken embryos is another way of mass production of these viral antigens. Uh, even animals, if you can afford, although they were very costly exercise, but they could be used as well for mass production of these viruses. But the modern trend these days is uh, that the antigen, those capsid proteins and all those that I've, I've talked earlier, those genes could be placed inside the plants. And plants, when they grow, they would make those proteins. And if the animal eats those plants, the, those antigens would naturally be absorbed through the gut. Although the success is not very good in, in this area. People are still exploring these possibilities. So in summary, vaccine basically mimic or copy infection, but without causing an infection. There are two types of vaccines, killed and uh, uh, life. Booster is required for all these, although uh, the number of boosting with live viruses is a lot less than the killed viruses or killed vaccines.